we just wanted to welcome everybody here for the past masters dinner, especially um, the Bill. Yeah, the past masters. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. Uh, we're going to have a little presentation from uh, Brother Cameron, who is our uh, newly elected worshipful master. The uh, June 23rd is going to be installation for him, so if anybody can make it, uh, it'll be a great day for Paul getting in and for this lodge, I think, too. He, he really helped. So I'll introduce uh, Brother Paul Cameron. First off, thank you guys for coming out here, and Randy, thank you for setting this up, because uh, this, is, this is what makes good men better. Um, they say that uh, masonry is about building the character of men and, and making good men better. And the way you get better is talking to the guys who were successful who came before you. So thank you guys for, for coming. Um, and when he asked me to put together a presentation for tonight, um, trying to figure out what to, what to say, I figured that you know, I could hit the old standbys of the, the rich history of Freemasonry and uh, you know, all, the, all the wonderful past masters that we've had. But, uh, I suspect that you guys know a lot more about that than I do. <laughs> um, although we do have a pretty cool history of uh, past masters of this lodge of, uh, you know, Marcellus Jones, who was responsible for firing the first shot at the Battle of Gettysburg. Um, Peter Rasmussen, who rebuilt Freemasonry in Germany after the fall of Hitler. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, my son brought home a report uh, just two days ago, and it was all about the founding of Wheaton and um, the two families that founded Wheaton in 1859 were uh, the Wheaton family and the Gary family. Interestingly, uh, we were chartered in 1858 as Wheaton Lodge before Wheaton was Wheaton. So I imagine that family was involved in some way, shape or form. Uh, but in 1894, we had a Gary uh, as a past master as well. So we've got a great history here, but I thought instead of talking about that, uh, we would talk about the rich future that we're gonna have because of the rich history that we've had, uh, just kind of the rest of the story of this. Because um, I don't know if you guys have the same kind of experience that I have in masonry, but whenever you get a chance to talk to a guy who's been a mason for a lot longer than you have, they'll make some sort of a, just kind of a, a throwaway comment, or they'll tell you about a rule or a something, and it just opens a whole new dimension to your understanding of what masonry is, and you, you go down this other path, or there's, there's this, this thing that you thought you knew about, but you didn't really know about it until you, you had that conversation. Um, so that's why I think these conversations are, are so valuable. And I'll give you an example. I had this happen just a couple of weeks ago uh, at the election. Um, as all the past masters know, you've got to get all your officers in a line you know, prior to the election. And I had a kind of a unique situation happening that I think most of our active members don't even know about, that uh, with the exception of uh, Randy that we had two guys um, for the same role that were very willing and interested in that exact same role. And I wasn't quite sure what to do with that. And, and it, you know, to spare you the big backstory on it, but it was, it was kind of a, what do we do now? Um, fortunately, the district deputy grandmaster was there uh, for the meeting, so I just asked him kind of protocol on this. And I talked to both of the guys and said, hey, you know, here's the situation, what do we do? never came to a conclusion, so uh, talked with our DDGM and just kind of explained, you know, hey, what we've decided we want to do here is to just present it to the lodge. You know, why should this just fall on, on me or on us? And, you know, tell everybody, hey, this is, this is why I think this guy would be worthy and this is why I think this guy would be worthy and let's discuss it and, and come to a conclusion as a lodge. Seems like a logical way to go, right? And I said that, and he kind of looked at me funny, and probably some of the past masters already know this, that he said, um, no, you, you can't do that. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean you can't do that? Is that? If I can't nominate two people, maybe somebody else has to, no, 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 you can't, you can't discuss it. The way, the way this works is you put a name forward, and if you have another name, you put the other name forward, and that's it. Then you vote. There's no discussion. And I'm thinking, 
what? <laughs> totally just blew my mind. I could not understand it. And that night, I'm thinking this is ridiculous. I, can I at least talk to him ahead of time before the meeting so it's not in lodge? I said, no, absolutely not. There is no campaigning at all. And it wasn't until a couple of days later that I had that, that aha moment, you know, that kind of frying pan to the face, just, oh, I get it now. If masonry is about making good men better, like we were just talking about, and building the character of men, and your character is attached to your name, then of course that's all we put forward. You know, nobody needs to hear the backstory of what's going on on those men because they know whether those guys are showing up or not. They know whether those guys are, are acting with integrity or not or, or following through on their word. They know, they know all that just by the name. Their campaign has been going on since they've been a member of the Lodge through their actions. And we just kind of confirm that at our elections. And then we spend the rest of the year trying to build that character. Um, so this year, coming forward, um, we're going we're gonna to put a lot of very intentional uh, direction towards building the character uh, of the Lodge uh, in a lot of very, uh, very specific ways. I, I don't think there's a big secret in here that uh, Wheaton Lodge has been struggling uh, over the last few years. You know, it's listen to Brother Johnson talk about 50 to 100 guys showing up to meetings, and you know, we've had a number of times where we're concerned we're going to be able to open. Uh, because we don't have enough guys showing up and uh, thanks to the leadership of uh, Brother Watts, Brother uh, Sean Johnson, we've now got a pretty regular group of 15 guys uh, showing up every week. We've got 22 guys who consider themselves to be active members of the Lodge um, for our active email list and I know those numbers should be the same. Um, not everybody shows up uh, to everything but uh, the way I see it is, you know, if, like if, if you made a movie, for example, and you told everybody when it was gonna debut and you've advertised it and only six people show up to watch your debut, you can't get mad at everybody in town for not coming to see your movie. You need to make a better movie, right? So that's what we're gonna try to do is make sure we're putting some intention behind building um, character uh, in, the, in the Lodge. And we're gonna do that in a couple of different ways. Uh, one being, the um, website. Has everybody seen the website to this point? So we've, we've rebuilt the website. It's got a blog on there to keep people informed if they don't want to get emails. Um, it's got a, a calendar of events on there so you can quickly easily see what's going on. As of yesterday, it now has a past masters page. Uh, but that's really, that's not the whole story. So the rest of this story with the website is you can then log in. You will be able to log into this site, and we're still building some pieces of this, but if you want to check out the minutes from our last meeting, that's going to be in there. If you want to see the lodge announcements, that's going to be in there. We've implemented an entire LMS system, a learning management system, into the website so that if you want to build some particular aspect of your character, like if you want to get better at being punctual or planning your day or not complaining so much or you know whatever it is you want to work on on your own character we're going to create a course that you can follow the steps of people who have been successful in in addressing that to build your character to be stronger another project that we have going on is the successfulmasons.com site uh, out there which we built as a um, a fundraiser for the lodge so all of the profits of that site either go to Wheaton Lodge or to other lodges and to Masonic Cherry. It's just gonna support this lodge and some other lodges who need that help. So then the way that this whole thing kind of came about is we posted the Paul Revere charge for last year and it was watched you know, 30, 40,000 times and most of the comments were, why is your lodge room so empty? And we kind of made it our mission to fill the lodge room for our next installation, which we should be able to do pretty easily because the Illinois Grand Lodge has taken notice. So I'm, I'm hopeful that all of you can come to that and tell your friends to please come to that and other brothers who are not here to come to that because I think that will be uh, a really special day for the Lodge because there'll, there'll be a lot of people watching. So, but I want to uh, I want to close with a, a story of a past, past master. His name is Worshipful Brother uh, Elmer Pierce. I don't know if anybody knew him. Um, I say a past, past master. He passed away in 2006. Um, and I had a chance to meet his daughter uh, recently. 
she had been hanging on to his uh, past master's apron. He was master of this lodge in 1954. And she was hanging on to it for sentimental reasons, um, but just didn't have another mason to give it to and didn't want to throw it away and just reached out to us and said, hey, do you guys want this back? And of course, yes, we want that back. And to all the family members here, if for some reason the mason in your life gets hit by the proverbial bus, yes, we want that stuff back <laughs> if you have nobody else to give it to um, because we'll certainly take care of it and, and treasure that. Um, so I met her here at the lodge and she's very nice. Her and her husband came in and were very appreciative that we were taking it back. And she just went on and on about just how much her dad loved being a mason and loved this lodge. And uh, I saw a couple of heads nod. I don't know if you guys knew him personally. Okay, so um, he, to me it sounded, I'm, my, my stories are just coming from her, but um, it sounded like he was just very, very proud to be a mason and really enjoyed being a member of the lodge. And as she went on about it, I said, you know, let's, you know, if you got a minute, let me walk you into the lodge. Let me show you around, right? And she's like, oh, yeah, that would be great. And so I, I walk her into the lodge, and, you know, as we're walking in there, I'm, you know, going on about, you know, if he was master in 1954, then he was probably at his hands full because of the fire was not too long after that. And we walk into the room, and I'm pointing out the, the mural on the back wall. And, and if you see that the, the larger chair in the middle there, that was the master's chair, so when he was master, that would have been where he, and he had to stop. Because if you could have seen her, she was just, I can't even describe it, she was just lost in this gaze, uh, looking at the room. You know, like she was, like it was familiar to her, but she hasn't been there in decades. But then at the same time, she knew she was never going to come back. You know, so she was trying to take it all in. You know, and, and it was like she was visualizing her, her dad walking around the room in a suit and tie and that apron and, and happy. And her, her eyes are, you know, welling up with tears. And, and all I could think to myself is, you know, she, she doesn't know the half of it. You know, she doesn't know all the, the hours and hours and hours he spent in this room working with the officers above him to learn what he needed to, to learn to build the character in himself so that he could be elected as master of this lodge and all the hours and hours he spent in this lodge working with the officers below him to, to help them learn what they needed to learn to build the character in them so that they could progress through the line and be elected into the offices that they wanted to progress to and the ceremonies that he was a part of and there was so much I wanted to tell her and um, she just you could see her just all of a sudden kind of you know shake her head and snap out of it and realize she was maybe getting sad and didn't want to go there and all of a sudden just, you know, I, I gotta go. And they just kind of quickly rushed out, you know, thank, thank me for meeting her and, and giving her the tour and very, very, you know, gracious people. And, uh, but they rushed out and I didn't get to tell them anything. And I don't know if you guys saw the blog I put out right after that of, you know, hey, if you guys have any stories about this guy, please share, I'd love to share the stories with her. And, and it wasn't until now, until getting to put together this presentation that I had another aha moment, or maybe the same aha moment, that she didn't need all the backstory. You know, she, she didn't need to know all that stuff behind it because she knew the character of that man. You know, she, she knew the character of her father, that he was a man of integrity, that he, that he was true to his word, and that he, that he honored his commitments. He showed up when he said he was gonna show up. She didn't need the story. Apparently I needed the story. And apparently that's a character issue in, in me that <laughs> needs to be solved so I don't have to get all these stories. But um, it was just a, it was an amazing moment. So we're gonna do this again, this time next year. Um, I hope you will all come back and uh, hopefully you will work with us throughout the year in helping us to make things better. I've already got a ton of ideas just from that table over there on how to do things better uh, that we can implement. I hope that you will all tell all of the other brothers who are not here that this is a movie they need to see, right? That, that you just don't know how many times it's going to show, right? You don't know when that proverbial bus is coming along, right? So you, you don't know when that, that apron is going to be sitting on the table here and we're talking about you. So come back, you know, as often as you can, because as long as we're here, 
we're going to be trying to help improve everyone's character, whether you live close by or not. So thank you, brothers.